Hello and welcome to another episode of Bottom of the Clutch. And well, here we are again. Another no-hitter to talk about. And oh boy, this one is a doozy. Last week, I ended our episode with the question, will we be back for a third consecutive no-hitter? Will we be back for our third coverage of a consecutive no-hitter next week? And, well, on Saturday night, Madison Bumgarner, three-time world champion and 2014 World Series MVP, tossed a seven-inning no-hitter in Atlanta. There have only been 307 no-hitters since 1886 for an average about two a year. Sometimes years go by without a no-hitter occurring. Somehow, I actually managed to be at the Johan, or should I say, Nohan, no-hitter, and only no-hitter in Mets history in 2012. Since then, there have only been six. Bumgarner's seven-inning masterpiece is the first unofficial seven-inning no-hitter since Deverne Hansack in 2006, which occurred after several rain delays. The game was called. This takes us back to a rule that was put into place 30 years ago. There used to be 50 or more no-hitters on the record books, but in September 1991, the Committee for Statistical Accuracy, chaired by the MLB Commissioner Faye Vincent, changed the official definition of a no-hitter, declaring it a game of nine innings or more that ends with no hits. So, we polled some of our Discord members to see what they thought. First up is George Fitzpatrick of the Monarchs. Hi, uh, my name is George Fitzpatrick, first time, long time. And I really feel like Major League Baseball made a pretty hypocritical and uh, an unfortunate decision when they decided to not count Madison Bumgarner's seven-inning no-hitter as an official no-hitter. If we look at what happened in 1991 when Major League Baseball changed the definition of the no-hitter um, in order to in order to say that the pitcher needs to complete the entire game of nine innings or more without allowing a hit, most famously taking away Harvey Haddix's uh, perfect game that lasted for 12 innings and only was broken up in the 13th uh, out of the official record books. I really feel Major League Baseball needs to stand by um, this principle if they're going to if they're going to do it. I truly feel that if you go through an entire official game that should absolutely qualify as without giving up a hit that should absolutely qualify as a no hitter uh and that's what madison bumgarner did it is not his fault or his responsibility that major league baseball recently made the decision to allow seven inning double headers major league baseball didn't want this as a possibility then they should have maybe considered that before and madison bumgarner's reputation or madison bumgarner's legacy shouldn't pay the price for that decision. Uh, Major League Baseball should reverse course on this decision. Hopefully they will. And um, I absolutely think that Madison Bumgarner's accomplishment of that seven inning no hitter should absolutely qualify as an official no hitter. No ifs, ands, or buts. I think George makes a really good point. It makes me think of Pedro Martinez's 1995 perfect game that was broken up in the 10th. And he ultimately lost the perfect game in no-hitter, but Mel Roas came in to close the game and get the shutout. Um, but should it count as a perfect game? I think so. But if they had lost that game in the 10th inning, would it make sense? Would it be, make sense to call it a perfect game? So let's see what our next caller has to say about it. Hi, Sean. First time caller, long time listener. Love your show, man. Keep it up. Uh, you know, uh, I'm really surprised that people find this at all controversial. I mean, Madison Bumgardner has been awesome. I mean, nobody's talking about this guy, you know, uh, just absolutely nobody, totally under the radar. Uh, you know, I think if you pitch the entire game and nobody gets a hit, you have pitched no hitter. If baseball doesn't want that to be a legitimate no-hitter, then it shouldn't schedule seven inning games. You know, it's not it's not uh it's not Bump Gardner's fault that he only had seven games to pitch. He only pitched the games that he had. So anyway, thanks a lot, man. Keep it up. Uh all right, bye. Well, it appears everyone seems to be in agreement on this one, which is kind of boring for this video, but it just goes to show you how baseball fans really feel out there. If you're curious or want to know more about the history of MLB no-hitters or ones that were taken away, check out the link in this video courtesy of Sabre.org. Well, another day, another no-hitter, and another episode of Bottom of the Clutch. 
dare I say, will he be back for a fourth consecutive no-hitter? And will he hit the chair this week? We'll just have to find out. Right on the money. Oh, and it rolls off. 